What is up, guys? Welcome back to True Crime Tuesday. I'm Sarah Weaver. If you don't know what True Crime Tuesday is, it's a day where I do my makeup and tell you guys a true crime story at the same time. This week, we are kind of like keeping the Valentine's theme going, okay? We're going to talk about the Lonely Hearts Killers. And this story is about Raymond Fernandez and Martha Beck, who basically met over a personal ad and decided that they wanted a life of crime together. So we will dive into that a little bit more in just a minute. But if you guys like these kind of videos where I'm doing my makeup and telling you a true crime story, um, please subscribe, please like the video, um, leave me a comment below, you know, just say hey. Um, I love when you guys like tell me you're a new subscriber or um, let me know like how you found my videos and stuff like that. I think it's so interesting to uh, see how people are discovering me and um, I hope you guys like this series so far. So yeah, leave all that down below. I also um, put everything that I use on my face in the video down in the description box below. So you can always check that out if you're curious to know what I'm using during the video. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. So I'm just gonna pull my hair back. I actually dyed my hair yesterday, was it? And, um, I dyed it like a dark brown color, but I feel like you guys really won't even be able to tell. I mean, like, I can tell a little bit in person, but with this lighting, like, it almost looks the same color. So, you know, I might have to re-dye it. It's hard to tell with those box dyes, you know, what color you're actually going to get by the time you're done. But here we are. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. I'm gonna start with primer. Okay. So as I said, this story is about Raymond Fernandez and Martha Beck, who are better known as the Lonely Hearts Killers. And I'm going to kind of tell a little bit of a backstory of each of these characters, and then we'll kind of get into the point where they meet each other and you'll see what happens after that. So Raymond Fernandez was born on December 17th in 1914 and he was born in Hawaii but his parents were actually Spanish. So growing up Raymond kind of spent most of his time in the States going from Hawaii to Connecticut um, and I think they would visit Spain every once in a while, but he mainly stayed in those two areas. So as an adult, he ended up serving in World War II, where he was stationed in Spain for a while. And while he was there, he got married and he had multiple children. It doesn't say how many he had in this article that I'm reading, but um, he had a couple kids, which later I think he became estranged from because they are no longer in the story. They're not in his life. He doesn't talk about them or have any connection to them. So that's unfortunate, but I guess that's one of those things that used to happen when you're in the army. You would go somewhere and get some women pregnant, maybe marry them, I don't know, and then leave them. So that seems to be like kind of what happens in this story. Also, while he was deployed, he experienced a traumatic head injury when a steel hatch fell onto his head and basically cracked his skull so bad to where it actually damaged the frontal lobe of his brain, which if you know serial killers, you know like oftentimes they had a traumatic 
brain injury at some point in their earlier life. And they found that that can actually lead to, you know, poor decision making, um, other, I can't even remember what, I'll just, you know, have to tell you, let me look it up. What does your frontal lobe do? Okay, so this says that the frontal lobe is the part of the brain that controls like cognitive function, such as emotional expression, problem solving, memory, language, judgment, and sexual behaviors. So in essence, it's the control panel for our personality and our ability to communicate. I feel like Bill Nye the science guy. Bill, Bill, Bill. All right, back to the story. So he damages this part of his brain and his friends and family, people close to him, said that they noticed a change in just his personality and all of those things. So they did notice he was just being kind of weird after this happened to him. So because of this injury, he also was discharged from the army after being hospitalized for a while. And this is when Raymond actually committed his first crime, which was stealing clothes from a department store. So... After he commits this crime, he ends up serving a year in prison. So while he's in prison, he basically learns of the religion of voodoo, which I don't even know if it's considered a religion, but the practice of voodoo. And he is like very intrigued by it. Um, he thinks that it will give him power over women and make him essentially irresistible to them. Okay, so that's where things stop with Raymond, and now we're going to get into Martha. So Martha was born on May 6th in 1920, so she's a little bit younger than Raymond is. Um, and she was born in Milton, Florida. She came from a pretty strict upbringing from what I read. She was also molested by her brother when she was younger. Um, I guess around the age of like nine, ten-ish, she started to develop a lot earlier than other girls her age. And, um, you know, puberty and becoming a woman and all these things were happening to her and boys started to take notice, you know? And unfortunately, one of those boys was her brother and he molests her. And instead of her mom punishing her brother, she decides that she's going to actually punish Martha because Martha is developing and I don't know, she thinks that she's doing something to attract her brother to her, which is so twisted and messed up. Like, obviously, that's not right. I just can't believe, like, that there was a period of time where, like, people even thought that way. You know, that women were, like, encouraging males by, you know, just their sexuality or just, like, puberty. I mean, they're just becoming women and developing and things like that, like normal human beings. And people want to act like that's not the man's fault for going after them. I don't know. Don't get it, but whatever. So I think like what a lot of young girls go through at this time, if you developed younger, sometimes you can feel like you don't want to attract that kind of male attention to you, so maybe you gain weight to kind of make yourself less attractive. And it might not be a conscious thing that you do, but I've heard, you know, like that is a very common thing that happens with women. So I think that's what kind of happened in Martha's case. So she gains weight and she's teased by a lot of kids growing up and boys and things like that and it really does a number on her self-confidence and she just really doesn't think a lot of herself 
So by the time that Martha was able to get out of her house and leave this situation that she was in, she did. And she ends up moving to California from Florida. And she just kind of takes odd jobs there, just trying to get by. And she decides that she wants to become a nurse. So she starts going to school for nursing. And once she gets her nursing degree, she decides that she wants to work as a nurse on a military base. While she's there on the base, she actually begins <laughs> begins she begins to date some of these military men that are on the base and she becomes pregnant. So after Martha tells the father of her child that she's pregnant, he <laughs> unfortunately, decides that suicide is a better option for him than to marry Martha and raise their child together. So some stories I read said that this man ends up killing himself. Other stories I read just said that he attempted suicide. Um, so I'm not really sure what happened to him, but either way, he just didn't want anything to do with Martha, and he basically took himself out of the picture. So after this happens, it really destroys Martha, and she decides she's just going to move back to Florida and have her baby there. So when Martha goes back to Florida, she ends up telling people there, you know, my child's father died in the war, and all this stuff because she doesn't want to tell anyone obviously like the truth of what happened to him and she feels very ashamed of it and you know so she just makes up stories basically to anyone who asks her where this man is so after martha has her first child she actually becomes pregnant again with the second child and this time she actually got the guy to marry her, but it only lasted six months and he basically peaced out. Um, it doesn't say why or what happened, but this man just did not want to stick around for whatever reason. So he's gone. And once again, Martha is left to raise another baby by herself. So now she has two kids. She's just out here being a single mom, you know, working as a nurse. I mean, how horrible. I mean, I guess there are worse things, but that just sounds like so sad, you know? Like, you f you think, like, these men really love you and all this stuff, and they're going to marry you. They're going to help you raise your children. No. You were wrong. Wrong again, Martha. Wrong again. At this point, Martha is just feeling very desperate. She just wants a man, somebody to love her, somebody to spend her life with, take care of her kids, all these things with her. And she gets really obsessed with like romance novels and um, magazines and things like that. Any type of like movie. She's just all into love and fantasy land and all this stuff so then after a certain point she's like you know I'm not meeting any new men out here I need to find a different way to meet people and back then you know they didn't have like dating apps and stuff like that obviously <laughs> Duh. but you know they had these things called lonely heart ads so Basically, what it sounds like to me is that you would write in to these people who would post ads in the newspaper or magazines, and they would have, like, a personal ad basically saying, you know, I'm Sarah Weaver, and I'm looking for this. Um, this is a picture of me, all this kind of thing. Basically, you know, a little Tinder bio on a newspaper. So... In her ad, she basically forgot or 
left out the fact that she had kids. So these men would write into her and they would find out that she has kids eventually and they would be like, oh, sorry, you know, I'm not interested. I don't know what it is with these men back then and they don't want to have kids or maybe it's just because they're someone else's kids. I don't know, but it's so messed up. Like, I don't know. I just feel bad for Martha at this point. At this point, okay? This is before she, like, goes crazy. So, you know, at this point, I can feel bad for her, right? So, this is now the part where things get a little juicy, okay? This is when Raymond and Martha actually meet each other. So, over the years, Raymond kind of turned into a con artist and... He would post personal ads or respond to other women's personal ads, or Lonely Hearts ads, I should say. And he would basically con them into falling for him, and he used his, you know, voodoo magic or whatever he was doing, and he would con them into falling for him, and then he would basically kill them and take their money. Okay, so this guy was like up to no good, right? And it sounds like Martha was just going to be another one of his victims. So basically, Raymond looked at Martha as just another target, right? He saw that she was a nurse, thought that, okay, this woman probably has some money saved up, you know, she has a good job. He didn't know about the kids, so, you know, he's not thinking that she's spending her money on kids or anything. So it sounds like the two of them, Martha and Raymond, kind of talked back and forth for a couple weeks. Um, Raymond at one point asked for a lock of Martha's hair, I'm guessing to perform his little voodoo ritual or whatever he was going to do on her to make her fall in love with him. So he does that. And for some reason, like, it's said that Martha found this very romantic of him, that he wanted, like, a, a lock of her hair. And I don't know why, but, like, wouldn't that creep you out? Like, a man just that you don't know, you've never met him before, you've only talked to him for a couple weeks, he asks for a lock of your hair. And, I mean, I don't really know... <laughs> He must have given her a good reason for it because, I mean, any reason to me sounds like um, a creepy reason. So, you know, Martha obviously was, you know, I don't want to be mean, but she was desperate, okay? This girl is out here in a drought, you know, she needed a man and she was going to do anything for one, apparently. So then the year is 1947 and it's and it's December and the two of these crazy kids decide to meet each other. So Raymond goes down to Florida and visits her. He lives in New York and he's very shocked to find out that she has two kids, okay? But he says, you know, he loves her anyway despite the fact that you know, she lied to him and yada yada. It sounds like, you know, Raymond was planning on staying there for a while, but he ends up abruptly leaving early. And this kind of freaks Martha out. She's, you know, turning into a stage five clinger, like, don't abandon me. You know, all these other men before you have done this and... Like, I don't think I'm going to be okay if it happens again. And Martha actually ends up threatening to kill herself if he leaves her. So I guess, you know, Raymond ends up leaving, but he still keeps in contact with Martha out of, you know, just basically fear that she's going to actually follow through with committing suicide. At this point, Martha is fired from her job, and she basically takes this as an opportunity to, or a sign, really, 
to go up and move to New York to be with Raymond. So she packs up her things and takes her kids and they move to New York. And Martha just shows up on Raymond's doorstep and she's like, yo, 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 what up? Like, Martha in the house. And Raymond is shocked, okay? He's like, I got my other side hose here. Like, you can't be cramping my style. So, <laughs> just kidding. So at this point, I guess Raymond figured like, if you're going to come up here and live with me, you got to know what I'm really up to, okay? I'm a con man and, you know, he kind of tells her his whole plan for how he's been conning these women out of their money and all this stuff, right? Now, to most people, they would hear that and be like, all right, dude, that's all I need to know. Like, peace out, right? Not Martha. Martha is special, okay? Martha actually finds this very attractive for some reason. And she's like, I will do anything to be with you. So if this is the life that you want to lead, like, I want to lead it too. And I think at this point, <laughs> Raymond's kind of like, dang, I cannot do anything to get rid of this chick. Like, I told her that I'm luring women in and conning them and all this stuff, and she still wants me. Like, I'm sorry, Raymond. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. It kind of makes you wonder, though, like, why he didn't just kill her. So, at this point, I guess Raymond's like, okay, Martha, if you're gonna stay here with me and you're gonna help me, you know, live this lifestyle, we can't be having these kids running around, okay? Because they're gonna get in the way. Like, I just can't, you know, I can't deal with these kids. So, Martha's just like, no problem. Let me get rid of them. And she takes them to the Salvation Army and just drops her kids off there and leaves. And, you know, they're just kind of left as orphans at this point. Which, honestly, like, I hope those kids had a great life because it sounds like they had a very unstable mother to deal with at this point in time. So once Martha does this, it kind of shows Raymond how loyal she is, and he takes this as a great sign, you know, like, this girl is willing to get rid of her kids for me. So now at this point, they can begin their con game again. I guess their plan is to answer these ads in the newspaper for Lonely Hearts, and go pick up these women and eventually they would convince these women to let them move in with them and stay there you know so they could all get to know each other better and Raymond would tell these women that Martha was just his sister so she just seemed like oh you know I'm just along for the ride I want to make sure Raymond's okay whatever she was telling these women to make them feel comfortable with her being there. So it sounds like sometimes their goal was just to maybe rob these women, take something from their house, you know, steal whatever they needed to steal, and then just go on their way. So during their crime wave, one of their victims was Myrtle Young, and Raymond actually ended up marrying Myrtle in 1948, and Martha was present for the marriage ceremony and everything, but obviously these women would think that it's just his sister. So during this marriage, basically Raymond convinced Martha that he would never consummate the marriage, they would never have sex, you know, things would be platonic so that way he would have the real connection and the real love was always going to be with Martha, but these women were just being used, basically. But in this case, Myrtle was not having this, and she 
I guess was sexually frustrated and she was like, why won't you have sex with me? And she grew very angry one night and <laughs> to calm her down, Raymond gave her sleeping pills and apparently he gave her too many. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but it knocked her out and killed her. So at this point, it's said that, so at this point, it's said that the couple carried her onto a bus unconscious and they somehow got her back to her home in Arkansas. I don't exactly know where they started at, but by the time they got there, she was still unconscious and I guess she wasn't officially dead. They take her to the hospital and she ends up dying in the hospital, unfortunately. So after this, their next victim would be 66-year-old Janet Fay, and this happened in January of 1949. So this time, the two get married, and Raymond, the little slime bag that he is, decides that he is going to consummate their marriage. So one night, Martha sees them having sex, she walks in on them and she goes into a blind rage and she just flips out and she takes a hammer and starts beating this woman in the head with it. Then at this point, I guess Raymond was like, okay, yeah, let's kill her. Um, and he just hops up and starts helping her and he ends up strangling her to death. So after they kill Janet, they decide to take her body and, you know, clean up all the blood and everything. So they take her body and they put it in this trunk that they brought with them, right? And they decide to take this trunk and drop it off at Raymond's actual sister's house, his real sister. And I guess she wasn't home, not really sure. They left the trunk there for a couple of days and then they came back to retrieve the trunk. But instead, I don't know where they ended up burying the body, but it says that they buried it in the basement of a house. I'm not sure if it was his sister's house or somebody else's house, but they buried the body. And at this time, they kind of are running out of money and they're pretty desperate. So what they end up doing is writing letters to Janet's family, asking them for money to send to Janet, you know, pretending that she's still alive and keeping this whole thing going for a while. So that gets them some money to hold them over. So at this time, like, neither of them had real jobs. They were both basically just living off of killing these women and taking their money. So it's really all they had was the money that they would get after killing them, right? So after they kill Janet, they go to Michigan. And this is where they happen upon a woman named Delphine Downing. Delphine invites the two of them, Raymond and Martha, to come stay with her at her house. And this is in February of 1949. So after a couple of days, Delphine kind of gets suspicious about why they're there and, you know, she's just questioning what the heck is really going on here. So Delphine starts to get loud, you know, angry, arguing with Raymond, and Raymond once again gives her some sleeping pills to knock her out, right? So while this is happening, Delphine actually has a child named Raynell. So Raynell is screaming, right? Totally just terrified of these two and what's going on. And so Martha freaks out and she starts choking Raynell and basically chokes the kid until they pass out. And I'm not sure if this was a, a son or a daughter or what, but... Um, then Delphine is okay. I guess she's still alive and so is Raynell. But Raynell has marks on her throat now from being strangled. 
And they're both like, we can't let Delphine see this or she is going to flip out, right? She's going to blow our cover and we can't have that. So Raymond just decides, I'm going to shoot her in the head, right? That's the only way out of this. So he does. And now the two of them are basically stuck with this child to take care of. And, you know, Raymond's not having that. So, of course, he's like, okay, Martha, you're going to have to kill this child. So, basically, what happens is Martha kills Raynell, right? Just puts her or him in a bathtub and drowns him to death. So, Raymond shot Delphine in the head already, right? And they decide to bury the bodies in the basement of their house. Now, after this happens, of course, like any normal person, they decide that they are going to go to the movies. I know. I was shocked. Honestly, they go to a movie. Um, there's a picture of them at a movie that I found online, but I don't know if this is from this specific movie that they were at. However... They go to this movie, they come back, go to bed. The next day, they wake up to knock on the door. It's the police. And apparently, a neighbor had called the police to come and do a wellness check on Delphine. And, of course, they are surprised to find Martha and Raymond there, right? So, they just take them in and they're like, you guys are under arrest. Like, what's going on here? They take him in, question him, and apparently Raymond just decides that he's going to confess to everything right then and there. And he actually confesses to about 17 other murders as well. But then he later retracts that and he says that he wasn't, you know, in the right mind when he said that he was trying to think of Martha and he didn't want her to go down for it. So he was trying to take the blame and I don't know whatever. But really, we find out the real reason that Raymond confesses is because he thinks since they are in Michigan and Michigan doesn't have the death penalty that they're just going to get off easy with a life sentence in prison. What Raymond doesn't know is that they can actually be extradited back to New York and put on trial for the murder of Janet, who lived in New York, right? Who they killed in New York. And so that's exactly what they do. They send them back to New York, put them on trial, and they get convicted, right? And of course, you know, even though they confess, like, they still want their life sentence. So that's really their whole argument is trying to get the jury to feel some type of sympathy for them so that they will want them to <laughs> not be put in the electric chair, basically. So, of course, this doesn't work, and they end up being put in the electric chair. So, on August 22nd in 1949, they are both put to death in the electric chair, and they both had some last words and some last meals, so I'm going to go over that with you real quick. So, Raymond's last meal was an onion omelet, and he had a side of fries, he had chocolate, and a Cuban cigar. Okay, I have a problem with the onion omelet. What the heck are you thinking? Sir, you could have pizza, tacos, steak potato, I don't know, whatever else, and you choose an onion omelet? I mean, you could even put, like, something better in the omelet than onion. I mean, I don't know. I guess that just goes to show that his brain was a little fucked up, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, I don't, I guess I won't judge him too hard on that, but, um, it's almost too late, like, I'm already judging you. Sorry. So his last words were, I want to shout it out. I love Martha. <laughs> what do the public know about love? 
Okay. Martha, on the other hand, her last meal was some fried chicken, some french fries, and a salad to round it out because, you know, you got to be healthy on those last days. Get that, that fiber in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so her last words were, my story is a love story, but only those tortured by love can know what I mean. Not unfeeling, stupid, or moronic. I am a woman who had a great love and will always have it. Imprisonment in the death house has only strengthened my feeling for Raymond. And then both of them were executed March 8th, 1951. Oh, I guess that August 22nd date was the date that they were convicted. But then they were put to death in March of 1951. So yeah, that is the end of the Lonely Hearts Killers. Um, thank goodness they were caught and that came to an end. I honestly, like, this is one of those things that I, like, I want to put a warning out there to all of the women in the world. I mean, I know, like, it's been said a million times at this point, but, like, in our day and age, we have all these dating apps, right? And there, are, I mean, I go, okay, I've been on a lot of dating app dates, right? And I haven't met any like weirdos yet, but I've heard a few stories from people, okay? And I just think to myself, like, it's so surprising to me that like people still fall for these guys who maybe they're not con artists, but they're like, at least just trying to sleep with you or, you know, whatever. Like, they have ulterior, ulterior motives. And a lot of these guys are creepy and could murder you. And, you know, like, just all I want to say is just be aware, you know? And if I have any type of platform right now, I know I only have, like, 50 subscribers, but I just want to, like, put a PSA out there to people, like, be careful of these men, you know, like, just be careful, because they're out there, they're still out there to this day, and, you know, also, love is just not worth killing people for, um, I don't think I really need to say that, but honestly, that is crazy to me, well, my dog's just trying to come in my room, all right, I guess I should wrap this up, but thank you guys so much for watching, and, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next week. All right. Have a good week. Bye.